In today's broadcast, I would like to begin some studies concerning insights into the ministry of Jesus, because you see, he is our pattern which we are to follow in everything. If we want to pray effectively, if we want to be able to minister and help others effectively as well as ourselves, then we have to see what he did, the methods he used, and follow those. Now, we see many things in the life and ministry of Jesus that he expects us to pattern our ministry, our prayers after. Jesus never tried to pray contrary to the will of God. Jesus always expected a response of faith from those he ministered to. Jesus never sought any confirmation of his faith in the visible or the sense realm. Let's begin with that pattern of his ministry. He never sought any confirmation for his faith in the visible or the realm of the senses. Jesus followed perfectly the definition of faith which he would later inspire the Apostle Paul to set forth in Hebrews 11.1, 1, that faith is the evidence of things not seen. Now, the presence of faith in the heart of Jesus was its own evidence that the things which he had spoken or the petition which he had asked of the Father in prayer was already done. Now, although Peter and the other disciples were astonished that the fig tree, for example, which Jesus cursed, had withered so soon, Jesus himself was not surprised, for he had known in his heart that the tree had died the moment he spoke the word in faith concerning it. In other words, he didn't have to stand around to see if he could get some visible confirmation of this fact before he was willing to believe it. No, he didn't have to stand around to see if the tree would wither any more than he had to examine the contents of those water pots to see if the water had turned into wine when he said that it would. In other words, when he spoke a word of faith, when he prayed in faith, he believed he had received. Now, sometimes those who seek to appropriate a promise of God by faith have the promise promise in their heart, in their mind, they pray, they claim the promise, they confess it, and then if it isn't manifested soon enough, you know, immediately or soon thereafter, they find they cannot maintain their positive confession of faith in the promise of God, and thus they do not receive the manifestation, say, of their healing or whatever it is they're praying about. Now, the problem here is they've not really met the first condition of receiving by faith, that is, they don't have their faith grounded solely in the Word of God, believing that whatever God has said or promised he will do if we meet the conditions. And so many people, you'll find their faith is shallow because it's based partly on God's promise that they've read and partly on visible circumstances, our feelings, are their symptoms. From the outset, we must see that if we're going to have effective ministry, effective prayer, then we must see, as Jesus did, that faith never seeks confirmation in the visible or sense realm in order to believe that God has answered our petition. Sometimes Christians seek such assurances, erroneously believing that this will strengthen their faith. You will hear people say, Oh, if I just had a little evidence that God had heard my prayer, how this would strengthen my faith. But the Scriptures tell us that faith itself is our evidence that God has heard and from His side answered our petition. Mark eleven twenty four. when you pray, believe you have received, and then you shall have it. Jesus is teaching us in Mark eleven twenty four that it's always after we believe and confess that we have received that the answer is manifested. Sometimes it's a moment after, at other times it's a week, a month, or even longer before the answer is seen in the visible realm. But true faith continues to confess that God has heard and granted our request and that we shall have it. Now we must always receive anything we pray for, first of all, in the faith realm before it will ever be manifested to our sight are in the visible realm. You see, faith is not concerned with the calendar. It's based on what God has promised, not upon physical circumstances, not what symptoms may say, not what circumstances may appear to indicate at the present. It seems that so many Christians are unaware that Satan can manipulate the sense realm and deceive you if you rely merely on what you feel or see or upon circumstances. Everyone knows, for example, that in the natural realm, appearances can many times deceive. You know the sun appears to rise and set when actually it's the earth which is turning in relation to the sun which remains still. Now, you knew that fact, and occasionally as you drive along, you thought you had a flat tire, and then you got out and looked, and all the tires were up, had the air in them as they should, but it felt like that you had a flat tire. So feelings can deceive. We're deceived by feeling our sense evidence all the time.
time. A stick appears to bend in the water, but you know that's merely an illusion. At times when two cars are waiting at a traffic light, you sometimes get the feeling you are slowly rolling backwards when actually it's the car beside you slowly moving forward. But you felt this movement because you thought you saw your car receding from the one next to you. Now, you were mistaken in all of these instances, so why, when you come to the Word of God in matters of healing or whatever you're praying about, do you rely entirely on the evidence of the senses concerning spiritual matters? Faith will never seek confirmation on the basis of what we can determine about the matter from the realm of sight, hearing, or feeling, because you know of cases where there are illusions and delusions, and you don't allow your life to be all mixed up and confused because you understand that, then why do you get confused when you pray and the symptoms don't leave right away. Why is it so many people say, well, God must not have heard my prayer. I must not be healed. Maybe it isn't his will or it's not for today and on and on. We're not to be guided by sense evidence because Jesus never was. We are to pattern our lives, our praying, our ministering to others as well as to ourselves after the pattern of Jesus. We're never to go by appearances when ministering to others, for example. Faith does not look at the immediate immediate circumstances, many times, in fact, most of the time, as I've prayed for people, the manifestation of a healing came later. It may be as they go back and take their seat. As the meeting goes on, there was not any immediate manifestation of their healing. It may be on the way home. We've had cataracts dissolve on the way home. Then they come back the next night and tell of their healing. Sometimes it's three days later or a week later. Sometimes it's been months. One blind boy, his eyes were open months after we prayed for him because he kept confessing that he was healed based on the promise of God. You see, Mark 11:24 has nothing to do with receiving immediate manifestations. We are told when we pray to believe at that moment we have received our healing, then we shall have it. Now, the shall have is going to be after you do your believing and confessing. It may be a moment, but it may be a month. Now, why should we not confess circumstances but confess the promises? Because nothing can ultimately contradict the word of God if we believe it and confess it. Jesus knew the fig tree had withered. He didn't have to stand around or set a watch all night to see if it was going to die so that he wouldn't confuse the people or pray a prayer that didn't come to pass or speak a word that would not ultimately produce the result he intended. And so in our ministry, when we pray for someone to be healed, assuming he or she has met the necessary conditions and the symptoms do not improve at once, we encourage that individual to keep his eyes not on his condition, our symptoms, our circumstances, but on the promises of healing in the scriptures, daily confessing those promises inasmuch as nothing can ultimately stand against the word of God. Ultimately, everything that contradicts the word of God has to give way to what God says if you believe it and confess it. Faith is believing that nothing can contradict the promise of God, not ultimately stand against the word of God. When you believe that word and confess it, that word is going to come to pass. That's what faith means. Now, the symptoms will have to give way to what God says about them. If the sick individual will faithfully confess every day, by Jesus' stripes, I was healed at Calvary. That's 1 Peter 2.24 with Isaiah 53.4 and 5 in the Hebrew. If he will faithfully confess each each day that he was healed at Calvary, his condition and the way that he feels and looks will then begin more and more to conform to what God says about the matter. We're told in Hebrews 10.23 to maintain our confession. We're told in James 1 not to doubt when we pray. Well, you say, isn't all of this positive confessing psychology our mental suggestion? No, on the contrary, it's the Word of God. For we're told in the Word of God, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7, and that death or life are in the power of your tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. Now, when I claimed my healing from a heart ailment several years ago on the basis of God's promise in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, surely he's borne away my diseases and carried away my pains in the Hebrew, we're told. 
I disposed of my medicines, and I neither looked nor felt healed for many months. Now several times during this period Satan caused the symptoms and the angina pains to return. But in each instance I believed I was healed, so I refused to accept the symptoms. That is the evidence of the senses. I resisted Satan with the promises of God. I didn't confess symptoms, I confessed promises. And as I daily confessed what God's word said about my condition, 1 Peter 2.24, by Jesus' stripes I was healed at Calvary, and when I refused either to confess how I felt or what I saw in the mirror, then gradually my condition came more and more to be in harmony with what God's Word said about my condition, what it should be, that is, health, not sickness, until finally my healing was fully manifested. Now, His Word said that I was healed at Calvary, and as long as my condition was not in harmony with His Word, this stood as a contradiction to the Word of God, and I just want to tell you, friend, nothing can contradict the Word of God if you believe His promise and will daily faithfully confess it. And so this is why my condition eventually had to conform to what His Word said, because I was confessing His Word, not the symptoms, and because two opposites cannot be true at the same time. My condition said I was sick, the Word of God said I was healed, so I could choose between believing what I felt or saw or what the devil suggested or what God said, and I don't know about you, but I would rather be well than sick, and so I confess the promises of God and not what I felt or saw or what Job's friends or the doctors previously had said. Therefore, the first principle of faith which we must appropriate if we are to minister after the pattern of Jesus' ministry is this. Never base the assurance that God has heard and answered your prayer merely on visible or sense evidence. We are encouraged to believe the word of God, not the word of man or the word of the devil. And we are to encourage those for whom we pray to distinguish between accepting the answer and seeing the manifestation of the answer. Remember, Jesus taught what the things soever you desire when you pray at that moment, not when you feel better, but then believe you have been healed and you shall see it manifested. Mark eleven twenty four. From my own experience in ministry, I've seen sickness and disease repeatedly defeated by maintaining a positive confession of faith in the face of all apparent evidence to the contrary. Satan often will not withdraw his symptoms and pains until he has made a trial of your faith, for he well knows many begin to waver in doubt in time of testing. So hold fast to your confession, and Satan will be forced to withdraw his work in your life or your body. Satan's power over you to afflict you or oppress you increases or decreases in direct proportion to your confession of faith or confession of doubt. We're not encouraging you to expect always a delayed manifestation. That's not what we're saying. We are saying that faith receives the answer when you pray, and the manifestation will come because God promises that. It may be a moment or a month, but believe you have received when you pray, just as Jesus did.